Okay, so once we have our drawing safely transferred onto the plate, you can see here that I've used the charcoal transfer method to kind of get the, paint, the uh, image onto there uh, the way that I want it. And so now I can go ahead and start working on the uh, actual drawing and scratching through the wax. So as you can tell, this is our floor wax hard ground that we have. Remember, we also have the acrylic one that's a little darker and a little easier to see what you're doing. For this particular one, I only have the floor wax on there. And so it's pretty clear. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly what you know, you're up to as you work on uh, on scratching into this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of work my way through it anyway. So remember the idea here is that we're trying to get ourselves, or work our way through the wax. So you can't really go too far in, right? You can't, it's not like you're gonna be able to uh, scratch too much into there, because this is all, the wax is gonna protect the plate from the acid, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, when I throw it in there, so a dry point mark isn't going to be a big deal if you gouge a little bit too hard, but you also don't have to push down that hard, and you can use like a diamond tip tool if you want to do that, um, you know, and that'll kind of help you scratch your way through there, but the finer and thinner your marks are, the sort of, uh, you know, more finesse the line is going to look like it has. If you want to have a big thick line, you can always use like the edge of a triangular scraper and scrape a lot of the wax off, or, um, you know, you can sort of turn your tool sideways a little bit, but you guys will get the gist of it as you go, and you'll be able to see the scratches where you've done your drawing. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to draw for a couple of minutes and let you see how, uh, how this all kind of works together. So. So I just try to make thicker, bigger marks where I want a really thick line and then I try to let up a little bit and maybe even leave some empty spaces for places where I don't want there to be a, um, a big line and then I just kind of work my way through. And it's just like in an ink drawing where you want thick and thin line variation, etching is much the same, you want mark variation. If you want to crosshatch things, you can just kind of, again, it's just like drawing with a pen and ink, you just have to kind of scratch your marks in there. You have to be careful though that you don't put your marks too close together. So if you put all your hatch marks really close together, like so they're touching as the acid bites in, it's gonna break down that little tiny bridge of wax in between them and it's just gonna turn it into one giant kind of crevasse, right? So you wanna make sure you have a little space in between each of your hatch lines as you're working your way through them. But it's a lot like a, if you've ever drawn with a ballpoint pen, you, you can do the same things, you can scribble. It's just an awful lot like drawing with any kind of a tool, uh, pen quill, mark, making um, anything like that that you can think of, you can work, work on here. So, so go ahead and draw, and when you're done, uh, you'll be ready to throw this uh, etch, the line, um, hard ground line etch plate. It'll be all prepared and we can just throw it in the acid and see what happens when we put it in there.